This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me today, well, actually tonight where he is, but uh, is uh, David Gorin. He is the chairman and CEO of Vaxel Bio. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is VXL on the TSX Venture. David, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Robert. So uh, first things first, wanted to ask, I, I know you're based in Israel, you know, and uh, and not that that makes any difference in terms of our global pandemic because it's affecting us <laughs> everywhere. But, you know, I have to ask, you know, how, how are you and, and how's the company holding up during this pandemic? So I have to say, actually, I think in some ways it does make a difference because our uh, the impact in, of uh, COVID in Israel has been somewhat less than what uh, what you've seen in California and certainly what's been seen in New York and New Jersey. Um, Israel has a population uh, a bit larger than New York City with uh, fewer than 300 deaths. Uh, from So each one is, of course, horrible. But uh, when you compare to what's going on in New York City, uh, the system actually seems to be working reasonably well. Uh, we've also managed to keep on working and progressing uh, with all of the, the rules that we follow. Uh, we all have our masks. <laughs> I have mine <laughs> right nearby so I can put it on. Um, and, and lots of uh, Purell, and et cetera. So uh, we all uh, have learned how to operate in this environment, but our lab is up and running and we continue to progress our work and our collaborations and we do lots of meetings this way as well. Well, that's a, that's a perfect seg segue right here because um, you know the company has been putting out a lot of news about working on a vaccine for COVID-19. Um, can you explain the company's approach and progress thus far? Sure. So uh, before I dig into the, the COVID-19 story, I just want to mention also that uh, we've been around for a while and have uh, had research programs in infectious disease before, as well as in oncology. Infectious disease, specifically, we've got advanced animal models in tuberculosis and found a good candidate there. Uh, and in oncology, we actually uh, also had a clinical trial, a phase 1-2-A clinical trial, where we saw good safety profile for our uh, signal peptide platform. So COVID for us is, is in fact um, a new vaccine candidate, but it's based on a platform that's been around, that's been tested uh, preclinical and, and even into the clinic. Uh, it's based on this unique platform of what are called signal peptides, which are short uh, peptides that are made in uh, most new proteins, and they target infected cells, which is something unique. Uh, many vaccines work by uh, stopping the virus from getting in, uh, but in our case, what happens is we prime the immune system, we strengthen the immune system to recognize cells that have been infected, and that stops the infected cell or the virus from replicating to other cells and getting out into the body. So, um, so that's what's different about us. Another thing that's uh, different and unique and what we've been working hard on uh, is partnerships. And we recently announced a, a great and exciting partnership with the Tel Aviv Medical Center, which is Israel's largest tertiary care facility. And what we're doing there is progressing our preclinical program for now. And then when we're ready, we'll move into the clinical trials there. Uh, and, and by partnering with various entities, we are able to bring together the best minds, work together. We get uh, extra validation of our platform. We get insight that we wouldn't have if we just worked in isolation on our own. Um, we've also done some in licensing. So we bring in technologies when we need to. We're exploring more in the COVID space as well. Um, and so we have that ability to be flexible and agile uh, as opposed to many other companies that rely on fixed structure, uh, which is something that helps us quite a bit. And we're advancing our, uh, our preclinical program in that newly established uh, partnership with Tel Aviv uh, Medical Center. Uh, so we're excited about that and looking forward to having results. Yeah, that was, that was where I was going to go next is, is where are we currently at in the process? You know, are we pre, still preclinical? So what's, what, you know, obviously this, there might be a long road here. I know all of governments across the world are trying to move things as fast as we possibly can because the race is right. on. You know, so, so I mean, so what, what are, from what you can tell us from where you are currently right now, you know, what, what are some of the next steps to get the vaccine across the finish line, whether it's both either in-house or through some of these collaborations that you've set up? So I think the, the phrase you use, race is on, is, is a great uh, phrase to describe what's going on. And there is a race here. 
there are a lot of players in it. There are more than 70 companies working on vaccines, uh, according to the WHO list. Um, some of them are getting a lot of resources uh, from large pharma companies, from governments, et cetera. Um, I think what's important to, for us to stay focused on is that um, it isn't a race with one winner. Uh, generally, vaccine companies don't succeed with a single company making one vaccine for one uh, target. Uh, and especially in this case where the target audience, the potential is uh, uh, in the, in the uh, billions of people on planet Earth. So the idea of having one company that's going to win, uh, I think, is probably not the right way to think about uh, the COVID vaccine story. So that's number one. The second thing that we try to keep in mind is that even if one or two or three companies come out with the vaccine, it won't be the end of this. This will have waves and vaccines might work in the first instance. They may work better on some people and not as well on others. Uh, the, the virus may mutate, although so far the mutations have been relatively minor. Our platform, uh, we hypothesize, is sustainable across more of the mutations because the signal peptide itself is conserved in the virus. So as it mutates, there are other parts of, of the protein that, that will uh, mutate, not the signal peptide part. So that's one of the advantages that we put forward is uh, that we can provide a strong immune uh, response and it would be durable over time. Uh, the other thing that vaccines often run into is that they don't, the, the immunity doesn't last. So like with flu vaccines, we take them every year. Um, they've been working on universal flu and lots of different ways of attacking, getting a vaccine across that would work for a longer period. Uh, but we hypothesize that because of the way ours work, works, it would be uh, more durable over time, uh, A, in terms of the general immunity, but B, in terms of uh, mutations that uh, might come along. So our most critical step is getting through our preclinical program in the next couple of months um, so that we can prove the efficacy uh, from a safety perspective where most of the vaccines start off in a phase one trial. Uh, we actually have a very good, uh, a good evidence about the safety profile of our platform Plus, in general, it is sort of generally understood that peptides are safe. So our signal peptides are generally understood to be safe and people don't worry about the risks of those. So our focus is on efficacy, on experiments, getting the results, the data, and then finding the right partners to go forward for both regulatory strategy uh, and funding and, and getting all the different types, types of uh, work done. And that's where we focus our energies, research funding, and research work. Right. And, and I have to ask because, you know, I, I, I'm just going to assume that the regulatory process is different in Israel versus the U.S. You know, uh, what, what, is, what has the government there done to help and push forward and really fast track some of these programs so that they can get them in the clinic? I mean, look, I know you're all, you got to wait on data anyway, but right. what, what are they doing to assist to, to, just move everything faster? So first of all, in the case of COVID, um, governments are coordinating through, uh, <coughs> excuse me, through the WHO programs. So um, it's, it's less different than it is in most other areas of uh, regulatory approvals today. So that's number one. Uh, number two, the conversations that we have are global. So we're not committed to re registering the product in Israel first or anywhere first. Uh, we'll go wherever we find the, the, the most, uh, the most uh, attention and the, the best chances of success. We want to assure everyone, of course, first and foremost, uh, in a vaccine that it's safe. And then, of course, we want to make sure it works. And wherever we get the best partnerships for that, that's where we're going to go. And that's the advantage of being flexible and not relying on the fixed infrastructure that can't be moved around. Got it. And, you know, so... I, th I think that that kind of wraps the bow on your the COVID indication. You know, that's, look, that's the most pressing thing, you know, and, and it's right. interesting because earlier in the interview, you alluded to this next question I was going to ask you because I think for all companies or most companies that I've talked to on here, um, especially that are, are dipping their toe in the COVID-19 race, uh, this is a new indication for them, you know, from yeah. on the treatment, drug development, vaccine, testing kit side. You know, and they've had companies that have done quite a bit even before that, you know, and uh, Vaxil is no different. So, you know, 
like I said, you talked about it a little bit earlier, but can you tell us a little bit more about the history of the company prior to uh, the focus on vac- on a, a, a COVID? Sure. So I think the, the place I would start there is to emphasize that even though COVID is new because it's new for everybody, it's a new virus, um, it, it's not the, the idea of doing infectious disease vaccines is not new for us. So we spent quite a bit of time and energy and tuberculosis, as I mentioned before, got some good results. Uh, and we will look forward to progressing that. We also believe uh, that our signal peptide platform can uh, function in other um, in other infections, virus and otherwise. So we will also be exploring that. And historically, we've looked at various infectious diseases uh, in terms of where we think we could go. So we have uh, computational tools that we can use um, to uh, estimate the, the efficacy where we think we can have the most impact with the signal peptide uh, platform. We identify the right signal peptides as we did with COVID and as we did with tuberculosis and also as we did for multiple myeloma where we had our clinical trial in oncology. So uh, as you said, we've been around for a while. Uh, we progressed the oncology program, um, as I said, as far as a phase one, two, a study where we saw good safety we saw good indications of biological activity or what would eventually hopefully translate into efficacy. Um, there are a lot of attempts in the, in, the, in the archives of companies to try various disease treatments and vaccines with peptides. Uh, they don't generally succeed. We believe that what we have is different in that it's the signal peptide. And again, the, this small area that is conserved and uh, affects the, uh, the outer layer of the cell. And that's where we see, for instance, in solid tumors, a lot of potential for a cancer treatment. Um, there's a theory around a cancer vaccine. I, I struggle with the word sometimes. I think uh, it is possible, and we do see evidence in our platform that we can, uh, we sh- we can prevent uh, metastases. So in that sense, a cancer vaccine is imaginable with our platform. Um, And we hope to be able to progress that um, in the next few months as well. We'll kick off some studies um, in solid tumors there. Um, So before we did multiple myeloma, but we think the the target for us is more in solid tumors and across all three. So we'll work in oncology, we'll work in other infectious diseases, and we'll move COVID forward as well as a vaccine. That'll all keep you very busy, that's for sure. Yes. (laughs) So (laughs) All the gray hair. (laughs) <laughs> that's blonde what do you mean oh right uh, yeah <laughs> i like your camera better than mine <laughs> <laughs> so david what also i have to ask what was your background prior to joining vaxel so um i've been in the farm industry for over 30 years uh, i spent about 20 years at pfizer 10 years at astrazeneca um started up some commercial operations in both companies uh, ran them as ceo of the operation for a while uh, worked on bringing research in and uh, um, all different kinds of commercial roles, worked in U.S. business, global businesses. Um, at Pfizer, uh, my last job there was I headed up the Worldwide Strategy and Business Development Group in New York uh, before I moved over to AstraZeneca. Uh, at AstraZeneca, I also did a bunch of global roles. My last role there was that I headed up the digital health strategy. Uh, and from there, realized that I could uh, do more in healthcare, digital health specifically, but in general, uh, by being a consultant and helping companies find their way and get their strategies right. Because getting a strategy right for a big pharma company when you're a small startup is challenging. Understanding that mindset and figuring out how to walk through the door uh, can be challenging. So I did a bunch of that, and then uh, this opportunity came up, and uh, I've been at Vaxel for about a year and a half. Uh, brought in a new head of science to kind of take a fresh look at the data. And then uh, we had this idea back in February when the genomic sequence came out uh, for COVID-19 to take a look at it and see if we could identify through these tools that I mentioned uh, a vaccine for that. So uh, we did, luckily. Yes, you did. Uh, (laughs) So then from what you can tell us, what? What are some of the company's goals and, and your vision for the company for the rest of 2020? Uh, so I'll sum it up in three words. It's data, data, data. We have to generate data and it's what everybody wants. It's what everybody needs. I want it. I want proof. I want evidence, validation that the platform does what we say it can do. Um, 
and, and I believe that it's simple. It's as simple as that. Perfect. Well, with that, David, where can my audience go and find more information about the company and to follow along on Vaxel's progress? Uh, probably our website is the best place, vaxel-bio.com. And we post news releases there. Uh, whenever we have results from experiments, we'll be sharing them. And uh, our financial statements, all that stuff can be found on the website. Perfect. And videos and webcasts now, you know, you got, you got plenty <laughs> of content. This. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, well, David, th thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this and also participate in our virtual event. Stay safe. Good luck. And uh, I actually, I really look forward to our next update. Great. Thank you very much, Robert. I appreciate your time. Thank you, David.